Hello! Welcome to FeralCon. This is my second panel that's talking about how to make natural character design. We're going to be piggybacking directly off of the previous panel that was about utilizing photo references. You don't have to have watched that one to follow this, but it just shows how I made this base. This base will be available to everyone at FeralCon for free using the code FeralCon2020. Yay! <laughs> And you can follow along using the base that I drew if you want to. Or just watch. Whatever tickles your fancy. Anyway, I strongly recommend if you are an artist and you're drawing all the time using something like this. It will help save your wrist from caputing. And I also recommend doing a lot of wrist exercises. That's very important. Even if you're a gamer that doesn't draw and you're using your mouse all the time and you're keeping your hand in this position all the time, you can get bad wrist cramps and carpal tunnel or if you type a lot. So take care of yourself, take care of your body. Now, with <laughs> that out of the way, we're going to be talking about natural character design. And in this example, I will be using this wolf base, but it can apply to any kind of species. So um, there will be some elements that I talk about that are more specifically about mammals, but that doesn't mean that you can't apply it towards something else and you can use at least some of the elements I talk about towards reptiles and other creatures like avians. So without further ado, hopefully this will be useful to you. We're going to switch to my tablet view. This is my Surface Pro, Microsoft Surface. I'm going to switch to that. There we go. This is the wolf that we had just drawn in the previous panel. And we're going to use this. So, talking about natural character design, what I mean by natural in this circumstance is basically taking inspiration from nature rather than, um, I guess, rather than like something that doesn't have a basis in nature. So, I'll talk about some things like countershading. So, this wolf is just a medium gray at the moment with yellow eyes, but say you want to make an interesting character, right? You want to make a character that's unique, but still looks natural, like it could exist in, the, in nature. So a good way to start, of course, is by looking at photos of wolves. And you might be thinking, wow, I love this wolf. So here is a... Um, a red wolf. I took a photo at the Point Defiance Zoo that's near Seattle, Washington. So these are my examples of a wolf I think is gorgeous. So we're going to try to apply this wolf's color to our wolf and use it as a basis. So we're just going to scoot that over here so we can see it. And this is a photo that I took. I will have a link to my photo references that I use in my shop, and you are welcome to download those and use them for anything you like, including photo manips, or using them as references, or using them as inspiration for character design, or anything that really inspires you. So that will be available. Now, it looks like the primary color of this wolf is like this kind of muted orangey color. So we're just going to color pick it right here. I'm going to grab a color that looks like it represents it. Maybe that color. We're just going to take this and fill it with that color. And then just for clarity's sake, um, I'm going to make the background a gray so that I don't get overly distracted by um, how bright the background is. It helps me stay focused on the lighter colors too. So there's that. And then it looks like this wolf has a saddle marking. And what that means is like, I mean, when you think of a horse, right? You think of a horse wearing a saddle then it goes in the shape I'll show you. It goes in the shape on their back, on their shoulder, and then it goes on their back. That's called a saddle marking. So 
we can kind of add that in there. Now this wolf is lying down, so it's kind of hard to see, so we might have to get a little creative with the legs. But it looks like it generally goes down here, and then a little bit into the belly, and then tapers off on the back. Looks like it goes just a little bit on the back legs, and then continues onto the tail. Okay, so there's that. Oh, it looks like it was on the neck. Okay, so this is kind of working on the assumption that you are taking inspiration from a real animal that you really love and you want to represent the animal with a character. And then just to soften it a little bit, I'm going to add the fuzzies on the edges. There we go. Now, a term that I brought up earlier was called counter shading. So normally when you think of shading, you think of it as being light on the top and then being dark underneath, right? And some animals are like that, but a lot of animals that use camouflage, including wolves or foxes, actually do the opposite where they have a dark top and they have a light underneath. And that's why it's counter, like opposite shading. Um, they do that so that they can camouflage better with their environment. Um, because when you're looking at them from underneath, their body is lighter like the sky. And when you're looking at them from above, their body is darker, like, you know, uh, like the uh, shading underneath a tree. So, that helps them blend into their environment. So in general, a lot of animals have a darker marking on top and a lighter marking underneath, including on their legs sometimes. And it's not always the case, but in general, uh, a lot of wolves and other canids will have darker markings, especially on like the shoulder area and right on the spine, and then have a slightly lighter marking here and then a lighter marking here. So that's what that means. Um, it's actually really drastic on something like a shark. Now a shark has a really dark top, like maybe like this. I'm just going to try a really crude shark. And then it has really bright underneath. Now why is it like that? Because when you're fish, and you're looking up at it from underneath and you see the bright sun and the surrounding really bright water, it looks like this. And then when you're a creature that is looking down into the depths of the water, then the shark is dark on the top. So it blends in. So that's a really extreme example of counter shading. So back to our wolf, we can see some examples of that here, like there's some much darker marking right here that's almost black, but then it gets lighter and lighter as it goes down here towards the stomach. So it looks like there's some stripes. This is like, this is a pretty common marking, I would say. So I'm going to add this in here. darker stripe here. And then it has a lighter spot that's almost white. 
right here. I've also seen this a lot on Yodis and Wolves. And it looks like we have another light spot right here. All right, so we got those. And then it looks like there's some other instances of the white kind of fading out. So I'm going to try to show that without going crazy and drawing every hair because it's clear that this animal has um, tricolor hair which is really hard to draw so we're just going to kind of suggest it without literally drawing every hair. Okay, there's that. And then it looks like I can't really see the tail very well because of the way it's sitting, but it at least has a really light part on the butt area, which is also extremely common. So let's add that. Get the haunches. And then that probably extends underneath. And since we can't see it, it perfectly, we can make some kind of artistic decisions here. And then a lot of times this light color extends into the leg. Not always, but it's pretty common. And then maybe this white area on the neck in this photo is much bigger than it looks on this one. So I'm going to accentuate that actually. Then it looks like our critter has a light section on the shoulders, or not really the shoulders, but because the shoulders are more like right here. Oops, you can't see that. The shoulders are more on this area, but you know, whatever this is called. The bicep. And then, interestingly, we have a dark marking on the front of the leg. That's something I don't see as often, so that's interesting. Oops, that's more like a green. Let's grab the same color. I think that darker marking would help our wolf character stand out because it's a much less common marking that you would see. And just to make this collar area more interesting, I'm going to add white to the end of this. So 
All right, so we got that. Now let's go to the face. The face area is really brightly white underneath right here on the nose. Looks like it goes up in the cheek and then it stops. And then it looks like, can't tell on the neck where the collar part connects. So I'm just going to take some artistic choices there. I'm going to pretend that the collar connects all the way. And then we have like a darker orangey on the top and around the eyes. But it's hard to see that it's like not enough contrast, so let's make it a little more saturated. There, that's easier. If you have too many colors that are so close together, it can be hard for an artist to see the difference on a reference. So it's nice to make the markings nice and clear. All right, so we have that mask area and then it looks like we have a slightly grayish sides. Let's clean it up a little so it's not so sloppy. And then I like the idea of using this like neutral base color to kind of fade out. So it looks like it goes in a roughly triangular way on the head. So I'm just going to do that. there. And then these ears are definitely darker, so I'm going to take the same darker color I use on the mask and apply it to the ears so they're nice and orange. And I also see that there's some white sections on the cheeks, so I'm going to add those too. Except I don't want it to be so bright, so I'm going to grab this slightly lighter color that we used on the collar section. That's the thing about character design, is even when you're working off a real animal, you don't have to make it exactly the same. If you want to change an aspect of it, you're totally welcome to, and it helps make it yours. All 
All right, so we have this. And then it looks like just the inner ear is a lighter white. All right, looking pretty good. I'm gonna reset this rotation. And then this nose on this photo is really green. So I'm gonna grab this spot that isn't green, but it's really black. So I'm just going to move that up a little bit. And instead of it being on the green spectrum, I'm gonna bring it back to the oranges. I think that will fit better with the color palette. A nice dark snoot and then there's no tongue showing so we're just gonna make that one up I'm just gonna grab a pinkish color that I like Alright, looking pretty good. I'm just going to add some fluffies on here. And then I really like these dark markings on the legs. So I think I'm going to mirror that on the other legs. And then just to give the feet a little more interest, because otherwise it's just a lot of the same color all the way down, I'm going to make the toes white. Now what color do we make the claws and the pads? A lot of the time animals have dark claws and pads, but you don't have to do that. Sometimes I do white claws. So let's grab, what do you say we grab this orangey color that's on the face and make that the pet color? That would be cool. It's unique, but not out of the realm of possibility. I think I just want to add a darker marking to the top of the tail and then we're basically done. A lot of wolves have a scent gland that's on their tail. I guess it would be more technically like up here that causes a dark marking on their tail. I'm just emulating that in this case. There. And there is our wolf design. 
that we made based on this photo. And we made it our own and we made it unique. I think that's so cool. So that is the first example of a character design you can make. All right, now let's do another one. I'm so sorry that the lawnmower guy is right outside at this exact moment, of course. Now let's do one based on the lion. It doesn't have to be the same species that we take inspiration from. Now say we just really love this dark marking on this lion. So let's, let's use that. So let's take this dark orange. And then let's take that really dark section of hair and let's apply that. It doesn't look like it goes all the way up the mane. There's like a lighter section up there. So let's just do it on the lower part. Now, this panel isn't about altering the line art in this situation, but if I were making a character design based off of this lion, or I was changing some aspects of it, I would totally make it fluffier here in this section to make it look like a lion's mane. But in this case, we're only taking the color palette and the markings, not the actual physical aspects in this particular panel. However, you're totally welcome to do that. You are welcome to take this line art and edit it as much as you like. So now we have the awesome marking there and then we have this lighter foot area. Looks like it goes on top of the foot like this and underneath. Then let's do the same thing here. And let's use this dark color to make the tip of the tail dark too. And then because this is faded, I didn't do this in the last design, but you're welcome to do look at more airbrushing or a more subtle kind of color transition. There's nothing wrong with that. It's depending on your style. Some people like to do a harder transition. Some people like to do softer transitions and you can combine them. You can do some softer ones and some harder ones on the same design. That's fine. And then let's just do around the face. It looks like we have lighter right over the nose, lighter around the eyes, oh, I don't know. I don't know about those lines. Let's take those away. lighter around there and then let's take this slightly paler color and add that around the face too. 
just to help transition it. And then conversely, this dark orange, let's put that up here. That brings a little more interest to our design. And I really like this paler color, so let's add that here too. So we have like a transition band right here. I think that's cool. Take the snoot color. Oops, it helps if I put it on the right layer. And then once again, because we don't have the tongue visible, we can just make one up. So let's make it a darker, darker tongue this time. To go with our darker color scheme. So there you go. There's a wolf design that's based on this line. Let's see, what else can we do? How about this maned wolf? This maned wolf's pretty cool. It has some interesting color patterns going on and dark legs. So let's take this shot because this shot has really nice colors. Let's take that main color. Gosh, I realize I'm doing a lot of oranges today. I'm gonna have to do some other ones too. Alright, there's that, but I really want it to be a little more saturated, so let's do maybe like a little darker. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe this is good. Okay, so let's stick with this. And then we have like a a dark section behind the arms. And then we have, in this photo anyway, it shows up as like a bluish, but it's her, but that's a really pleasant dark color. Let's add that. Oh, I should say, this is important. It's really nice not to have a hundred percent black because a lot of artists use 100% black line art. So if your character is all the way black, like a silhouette, it's going to be really hard to see any detail. You can kind of get around that by using lighter line art, but it totally changes the style. So I highly recommend staying away from 100% black. Like this is black in quotations, but it's not even close to the bottom of this color palette thingy. That's all the way black. And so let me show a comparison. Here's all the way black. So having some colors and having some colors, especially that aren't gray, really help. Just add more interest. All right, and something I think is cool about this mani is it has like light eyelashes. So let's grab that. This photo is dark, so let's grab this one instead. Light 
light eyelashes. And then it has like a lighter section by the mouth. And then underneath the face. I swear all the alarms and the lawnmower guy are happening right during my panel. I swear. Hopefully it's not too loud. Then we'll just clean this up a little. Oh, and a note about symmetry in designs. In general, animals tend to be mostly symmetrical, but you don't have to follow that rule. You can totally have asymmetric, um, in other words, um, parts of the character, the character design that are different on the left and the right side. I think that's really cool and interesting. So you're totally welcome to do that. And there are a lot of animals that are asymmetric, so it's not unreasonable. It's not unnatural. All right, so we have this. And then let's look at the leggies. They have those nice dark gradiented leggies. So let's do that with the airbrush. And then a heckin' white tail. Now this meanie's eye color is hard to see but it seems to be a brown. So I'm going to do a brown just for sake of example. All right. There's that. There. There is a main wolf inspired character design. And sorry if I'm going a little fast. I'm trying to show lots of examples because I don't want to be confined to um, only a few designs. I want to open your, open your mind to lots of different types of things and help you get inspired. So moving on to the next one. Let's do this pattern based on a taper. Now tapers have nothing to do with wolves, but we can still take inspiration from that pattern. So let's grab a whitish color. And then a dark color. Now when I'm color picking, I'm getting it on the green spectrum, but I don't really want that. So I just changed it to a bluish spectrum.
All right, and then it looks like our taper just has a little bit of shading around the nose. So a little bit darker face. A little bit darker right above the eyes. Almost make a nice dark nose. Lippy tongue. And then let's take this light color from the hooves as inspiration for like a lighter claw color. Like there's a little bit of oranges in there and a little bit of grays in there. So let's get, let's change it to blue, but get that lighter color for the claws. Then maybe we'll use this kind of yellowish color for the pads. Or should I invert that? Maybe I'll invert that because there's definitely more bluish color than there is orange color. Or if you're not thrilled about that, instead, you could even try doing a gradient like it is here. You could try doing the bluish color, but maybe make it less saturated. So the grayish. And then add a gradient. So let's try that. like this. Now that looks cool. Let's do that. Now that's a unique paw pad coloration I've never seen. And it helps kind of make your character stand out. Then let's just grab this dark color from the face and put those on the claws. And not a helicopter, I swear. What is going on today? All right, there is our wolf design based on a taper. So you don't have to feel confined to staying within the species. You can totally take inspiration from other animals and you can get lots of cool ideas. So I totally recommend taking taking a look at a bunch of different animal species and taking inspiration. Let's do, we have time for maybe one or two more depending on how fast I can draw. So let's take this fox and let's apply this fox pattern to this wolf. I'm gonna 
drive for speed of sound. I feel like this came out a little too blue because of the photo. So I'm going to adjust that base color a little bit. Make it less saturated. There we go. That's better. And then it looks like the ears are darker than even this. So let's do that. Nice and dark ears and a dark snoot. And this fox's eyes are closed, but I feel like blue eyes would work really well. So let's do blue eyes. Pretty. Let's get this lighter color. A little too blue, I think. So let's do a little less saturated there. Looks like we got saddle marking again. Usually it extends down into this area right here. Not always. But a good rule of thumb is that the saddle marking extends down to the arm and across the back and then sometimes even on the leg. But not in this case. So we're going to leave that part out. And then it looks like we have a darker top of the tail and then a lighter bottom part. Let's do darker up here. And then lighter down there. All right, those are Fox Inspired Wolf. Oh, I totally didn't do the tongue and the claws. There we go. Okay, now I can say <laughs> our fox inspired wolf is done there. So hopefully that gives you a lot of inspiration for how you can use lots of different animals to give you a pattern to work off of. And you can adjust it on the fly. Like here's one that's a meerkat. Man, I must like oranges because I keep grabbing oranges. And you can use like these stripes as an inspiration. You can add stripes to your wolf. Here, let's just do this real quick. We have a little more time.
it has lighter under the feet. And then the darker top. And then a real orange tail. Dark orange tail, or is that just the color? There we go. It kind of goes off camera here, but it has a dark tip. So we'll add that. And then it has like more orange right here on the front of the leg. And on the belly. Ooh, and then this nice silver goes on the head too. All right, and then let's grab the darker color on the eyes. Now this seems to be much more of a hard marking, so rather than a airbrush. That's kind of a neat shape. So there's that, and then let's do these stripies. Let's turn this so we can match it. And then let's do a lighter color between to kind of accentuate it. Something I forgot to say, having more contrast in your design will help it be more interesting. You can have sections of lower contrast that are more fades, and then you can have sections of higher contrast that you want to bring attention to. So maybe on this character, the stripes are really important and striking, and you want that to be the focus. All right. Oh, and I guess just the dark ears. And I'm not going to color the feet on this one for the sake of time, because there was one last thing I wanted to mention. So here is our meerkat-inspired wolf. So now that we've done all that, let's kind of go back. So here we are back at the beginning. Let's go back to a gray. So something I wanted to mention that can be really interesting and really personal to you is incorporating parts of your life into your wolf or into whatever character you have. It doesn't have to be a wolf. This is just an example. So, you know, say you have hazel eyes and you, um, 
Oh gosh, I'm not really good at drawing hazel right on the spot, but so you have hazel eyes and you find that really important to your identity and you want to add that in your wolf, you totally can. Say so you have scars that are really important to you and from a time in your life that you really want to, to cherish. You can totally add that as a feature. Like maybe you have a birthmark or maybe you have Maybe you have a scar from some fight as a child and you really want to honor that in your wolf. You can, for your character, you can have a, oh, let me make it brighter so you can see. You can have a scar, you can have markings. I've drawn lots of characters that have um, scars that are related to times in their life. Something that happened, maybe you had knee surgery, so that'd be something on your knee, maybe you had, maybe you're um, transitioned and you got chest surgery, you could do a scar underneath. So there's lots of ways that you can incorporate something that's personal to you into your design. And of course this is just natural character design, um, but you can go wild with it, like, you know, say something really dear to you is the forest, right? Something like you're really inspired and in looking at the forest and looking at the dark greens and looking at how the river is flowing and you, you know, you want to show that in your character. You could totally have a character that has a river flowing in its design. And maybe even like some sides of the creek, like where the rocky area is. And then maybe you have like the daybreak represented by like a lighter head of the sun shining through the trees. So there's lots of ways that you can show something that inspires you in your character design. And you don't have to be only taking from nature. It could be something more mechanical. It could be like, you know, bi bionic legs or something like that. It could be something that inspires you from a video game or from another character you saw or from a movie. And you can take those things that are important to you and make it something your own. It doesn't have to be from nature, but I hope that these examples from nature will help get will help get you started on thinking about it. So I'm running out of time, but I just wanted to wrap that up. I wanted to say thank you so much for coming to my panel, especially if you came to my earlier panel. Thank you so much for spending the last two hours of your life with me. It's very touching. I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, I'll be available in the comments. Um, I would be happy to talk to you, to answer anything. I can be contacted on social media. I'll have my social media links there. And I'm always happy to talk about character design. If you want me to review a character that you're in process of designing or you're thinking of redesigning, I would be happy to give my feedback. Of course, I'll have my biases because there are certain designs that I like and that might be different than what you like. But if you're just looking for feedback and you just want some new ideas, I'd be happy to talk to you about it. I know I didn't cover everything. There's so many infinite ways to come up with character designs, but this is just some ways that I do and I hope it helps you. Um, I will have this line art base available for free for FeralCon attendees using the code FeralCon2020. So feel free to download that and play with it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your con.